we were speaking earlier in, this, in the session about how it's becoming increasingly difficult for boutique and independent hoteliers to find suitable sites, to, uh, whether, whether that's properties to buy or buildings to convert into hotels, particularly in London. What's the situation at the moment, and, and is that having a knock-on effect into the provinces and making them more attractive? Uh, okay, so it's a, it's, a, it's a wide spectrum. So first of all, London is nothing to do with uh, the UK or even Europe. It's a, it's a global market, um, always has been, always will be. Uh, so what's happened is there's increasing global wealth uh, and a desire, therefore, to own real estate in central London. So the start point is that most of those international investors don't really mind overly whether it's a hotel an office building or, or residential, they want to invest in the capital full stop. And then it's about competing against different uses. So most owners just want the highest value. If the highest value is residential, they'll sell it to someone who wants to do residential. If the highest value happens to be hotel, they'll sell it to someone who wants to be a hotelier. And planning comes into the deliverability of that issue. So right now, uh, money is cheap. There is suddenly a lot more availability of money in the last 18 months or two years. And there's a global desire, increasing global desire, to, to, to own something in London. Boutique hotels are prestigious. Um, I'm selling something at the moment, and, and, it, and it's attractive for the owner to say, I own it, and, if you like, be proud of it to show off to their friends or, or their investors that, that they own it. So, so they've reached trophy asset class already in London, boutique hotels? Yeah, with, with, without doubt. And... and you know, the type of investor that comes to us and says, I've got, you know, somewhere between 30 and 50 million, uh, we can say, look, you can, you can pay that just for a house or, or a couple of nice penthouses now. Uh, so unfortunately, that's, even that level isn't enough money. You're kind of up into the 100 million pound mark to find something. And therefore, anything less than 100 million becomes a lot more affordable. Not that I've got the money, but, but there's plenty of people in the world who have. So to answer your second part of your question, how does that affect the regions? It's because um, lack of supply, high demand creates high prices. High prices create low yields. So uh, an investor might say, I'm very happy with a 5% return. Uh, perhaps in the current market, what was 5 might now be 45 or 4% return. And as the return goes down, the investor gets a little bit shyer about buying it or can't find it to buy. So they look for value. Uh, and if they go outside London, they find a much better return. And so the cities that then attract them usually have some sort of international connotation. Manchester, you can fly to Asia, you can fly to America. Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, um, and they have to be reasonably attractive cities. So as some of the money leaves London, goes to those cities, the prices increase in those cities because there's more demand for them. And with the entry of big brands into the in inverted commas boutique space, presumably they're competing for the same customers as, as the traditional and independent boutique hotels. Are they also in competition for the same buildings, the same sites, or do they have a certain level of scale that they can't come below? Uh, okay, so there's, there's a common, first of all, Marriott described bricks and brains. So, so I work in two different markets. There's demand for the product, uh, and there's demand to own the real estate, and, and they're two separate things. So generally speaking, the brands are trying to use other people's money to expand. They're not necessarily creating the competition in the real estate. They're creating the competition to be the operator. Uh, and, and they seem to be following the car industry. Um, so BMW at the moment um, probably will end up with something like 50 or 60 vehicles in, in, in the future because not only have you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, now they'll put an X after them and then they'll put an I after them and they believe with technology they can adapt the basic platform to suit the customer. S saloon, four door, hatchback, it's all on the same platform. Um, so the hotel brands seem to be going the same way at the moment and so you don't just have Hilton, uh, they are inventing sub-brands within that, Doubletree, Curio as a, as a boutique brand, etc. Uh, and really this is the power of the internet, just being able to plug into a reservation system hidden behind a brand name and the brand suiting different, different customers. So 
Global travel also increasing, so huge demand across global cities, London, Paris, New York, to stay and to stay in something different. So as one of your other speakers was talking to me earlier about food and beverage, it's about the experience, not, not just staying in a bedroom, it's, it's, it's a creating experience. So all of that is creating more and more demand. Um, and so if you go back then to real estate, you know, agents specialising in offices don't overly focus on building a product for a particular office occupier, whether that be Google or IBM or Coca-Cola or whatever. Um, and the same with hotel real estate, within a certain parameters, it could be any brand. And there's huge demand from different brands all saying that they can fill your hotel with different customer profiles. I think that answers your question. Yeah, okay. okay.